Billy P. Taylor. And I'm Sissy Sue. And we're the Hill Billy Prepper Gals. That's right. All day long, folks. And today, what are we talking about today, Sissy? Mutual aid, Sissy. And I'm telling you what, folks, mutual aid, that is a very, very important one that I think everybody should have. Yeah. On Sissy's list, it had how many? 25? 25 things needed during the top of national emergency, during a national emergency. But you know what? We should have made it 26 because of mutual Absolutely. aid. Absolutely. It's not just beneficial, it is a necessity. It really is. Whether you're leaving, if you're bugging out, if you're bugging in, if you're bugging whatever, you're going to have to have a mutual aid group. Because, because you can't do it by yourself. No, you sure can't, especially when you got acreage and property and if you want to survive. Absolutely. And I tell you what, if it was just Paul, Sissy Sue, and, and Jonathan Bob and me, I'd be washing, cooking, cleaning, and... And garden 24 hours a day. Everything that she's good for, folks. But and I tell and you, the, sorry. Another thing is, too, you can only have so much Red Bull. Eventually, you're going to have to close your eyes and go to sleep. I know. And, and when you go to sleep, it, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, sis. That's right. And ain't nobody, ain't nobody, that's super human. 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 <laughs> so, mutual aid is a good, what did you say it was earlier? Well, it's not, a, it's not, I was going to say, it's not like stock and bonds. It's not really an investment, but it really is an investment. It is an investment. It is an investment. It's an investment into people, and it's an investment of your time. It really is. And you know what, folks, when you're looking at forming a mutual aid group, hopefully you've already started that, and you've kind of got yourself somewhat situated, because it is always an ongoing process. People it is. are going to leave. You're going to try to get some new people in. Exactly. And you know what? Over time, you're going to find out. Who meshes the best? We, yeah. Like I said, we did a lot of public yeah, meetings. So people, <laughs> there was some that I really thought should a situation happen, and I'm being honest when I say this. I try yeah. not to be mean. I try to be Christian-like, but some people, I just could not picture being stuck with them for 24 hours a day, seven days exactly. a week, who knows Even how if, you long. Know, and, and you could end up in a, you know, because we're building cabins mm -hmm. and whatnot, but still... It's they're small, and you could end up in a very small area, perhaps. That's right. Or even if it doesn't matter, even if you got a huge house, and it then, doesn't matter. And then as we got, we went through the meetings, and we were trying to get people, you know, to, to weed out who and when and where exactly. And so you have to look at all kinds of things. There's things to think about, and a lot of them we looked at was the fact that there was a few people that we could tell off the bat they were not comfortable with Jonathan. Exactly. And I'm sorry. So that was a, a, a Nick. Now they wanted us to accept their five little screaming kids, but. They had a problem with Jonathan, and I'm like, exactly. And they never came out and said it, but you could tell. They hadn't even ever met him because, you know, Jonathan Bob didn't go to these meetings, and Jonathan Bob comes into the picture once we know people well enough. Right. And now, and when we started forming our mutual aid group, we went through the Texas Preparedness website. True. And we actually started one in the local area. Or well, somebody else actually started, and somehow, right. as always, it got put on a sissy to continue it. Right. Because, well, they had started the group, and then they just kind of... They just died, died off, so, you know, and that's what happens a lot of times. People start these things, they get into it, it's like the prepper craze. And the first thing that comes out of my mouth is, okay, where's your land so we can go there? Well, folks, it ain't exactly. like that. There has to be, the trust has to be built up. And, you know, one of the things this is, you know, we didn't mention that we even had land. That's right. But everybody, and everybody was sitting there thinking, so who's got everybody, land? Yeah, everybody kept saying, how are we going to get land? How so I said, we well, I've got money. I'll, I'll buy land, but I'm not going to buy it for everybody. We could all pitch in and buy land. And then it was like, well, we just know. want a place to pull our RV into just yeah. in case. Yeah. So we got, a, we got a lot of stuff like that. And so then we knew that wasn't really the type. And, you know, one of the things we looked at is what benefit could they bring to the group? You yeah. know, and we had, and we found out too because we did like we did like little gatherings where we went, we went camping in the cold. Oh yeah, which, oh that was so you cold. Can, you know, and nobody showed up in people's weaknesses. That's right. right, and they never showed up for that one, or it was too hot, so they couldn't show up for that one. And, and you know exactly, sissy. And that was, you know, for me, one of the most frustrating things of all is when people go, "Well, it's raining," or "Oh, it's too cold," well, or "Oh, it's too hot." And I said, "Well, you know what?" When I a national SHTF doesn't happen when it's hot, cold, wet, or whatever, I hope they can time it. That's right, because you know what? For you. Mother Nature, she, when, it, when she comes, exactly. you can't control it. And you, when the stuff hits a fan, you, we don't know what the situation is going to be, when it's going to happen. But you know what? I guarantee you it's not going to say, gee, let me hop into my truck, which is loaded with gas and all my food and everything's in there. No, it's going to happen at a time when I think people are least expecting yeah. it. Exactly. And, and the fact is, you just don't know. And you know, so you always have to be prepared. And the cabin, and it is a tiny cabin that, that's been built. True. But it is the first step, and then, you know, you guys It start is, somewhere. right. It is cabin one, and actually, it's no longer cabin one that's because right. cabin two. Um, 
David went Bob up. came down for a little visit and he volunteered his time and his family. And folks, in one day, they had the second yes. cabin up. And, I mean, and it was just a small sleeping cabin, don't get me wrong, but it was closed in, fully enclosed, had doors and windows. And that way it's, and now that they've got that part done, now it'll be adding on. Exactly. It. And then we've started building a, a second addition to it already. Right. So, and that we'll continue to do that. So basically, and at least they had some. That's right. And when I get ready to build my Taj Mahal of cabins, yeah, they're all going to pitch in. First is going to be a tent. And we'll help pitch it. If it's a tent, it's going to be that big horn from Cabela's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That thing is big. Yeah. Good. Well, one of the couples in our group, that's what they have. They have one of those um, command, um, tents. command yeah. tents. And hey, I've been going over to that side, too. Exactly. That, I know that thing will weather anything. So, if you don't have a mutual aid group, think about getting one, start checking out And if out you people. do have one, make sure up front you know what is expected because we did. We had, we have an actual agreement and it was, you have to have so much food, X amount of food, X amount, X amount, amount of, ammo, of ammo, and, and you, you have, have to have certain skills that you're willing to bring to right. the table. Because if everybody can fire a gun and do nothing else... Who's going to, I ain't washing all the socks, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, I, I kid around. And I ain't that. hauling all the water either. This thing is not going in. You almost got it. It's like crooked. It's hard to keep it going. Not hard to keep it down. I'm going to destroy your camera. <laughs> what was that, Kara? I'm gonna destroy your camera while you were sleeping. <laughs> I just hammered it down. <laughs> Mr. Smith, did I just see you using a handsaw? Did. In the 21st century? Did. When power tools are available? They are available. Okay. So was it not you that lectured me on the use of hand tools in well, the 21st century? The whole context of what's going on here, Christine. <laughs> you can't just go through life, you know, with blinders on asleep like you do half the time. This is because I'm getting ready for a major national bowling tournament. I need this arm built up. So <laughs> you need to leave me alone. I'm saving gas, getting it done, old style. Pretty easy, didn't it? No. Yeah, because it's sticking out on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> talk today, babe. It's payback. Karma. Karma for what? Really? <laughs> I guess, yeah, and Phil thought it. we were bad. <laughs> oh, you see that? Oh, where's the other one, though? It's livable oh, we right now. We should take the camera onto the other side, the one that you okay. just Okay, go ahead. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean that? Hey, hey, hey. hey. Callie. Are you helping Daddy build? Huh? Are you helping Daddy and Uncle Phil build a house? A shed, a cabin, or something? It's going to be a club. If the plans look Kinda like low. what we built. Actually, I have two more copies. They're smaller than that, but I have two more copies of that. Sweet. This shows you the, uh, the problems that you have with building in East Texas is that it rained a lot during this a project. A whole lot. And uh, dodging thunder and lightning and uh, possible crazies in the neighborhood. It's not <laughs> People cool. whistling in the woods. Yeah, while you're target practicing. This is, this is really the easiest part. I did the hard part, which is hold the reciprocating saw. So yeah. don't let it kid you. This is... This is easy stuff. She's so just tapping on the end to tap that piece out. And there we go. Into the rafter is going to rest right on there. And each rafter, there's going to be eight of them down this 16 foot expanse. Anyway, nine, let's say nine. <laughs> nine, because that's what they're <laughs> being. Quite a bit of water stuck up here. The second rafter. Oh, okay. It's just up on top, trapped in there, so I'm gonna have to get up there. Get huh? up there and get that out without it spilling all over the plywood. Uh, well.